powerful shadow demon has been awoken? What do we do? What exactly is a shadow demon? Where can we find it? But most importantly, how good are its loot? Shadow demon is a big boy that got his name from his ex-girlfriend for having the biggest bone among the other fiends. This is a boss encounter that is completely optional and therefore not commonly contested. It functions mechanically similar to that of the rock demon but with some extra quirks. But we will get to that, don't you worry. First, let's locate the shadow demon, go east from spawn all the way to the lake. Here you find a gaping hole, then jump right in and somehow there's a rope here. This sends complete no make and I have a bone to pick with the developer on this. <laughs> And this is the map of the Shadow Dungeon, a very thought-provoking name indeed. And this is where the Shadow Demon will spawn, so let's head on over. Note that the Shadow Demon does not spawn on a natural timer, and just like the wrong demon, you must kill either the Shadow Fiends or the Shadow Flames to trigger a random event that summons the boss. Now you might be curious, why do we need to fight him? The answer is simply, he drops more balance fragments than the other mobs around? Yeah, th that's it. That is all the Shadow Demon drops, as well as <laughs> which the Shadow Fiend and Shadow Flame do too. But to his credit, he does drop balance fragments a lot more consistently, and you should farm him if you want to get your hands on more of those. As you can see from my kill count, I have beaten over 250 shadow demons and this got me 28 balance fragments. Two more fragments came from more than 5,000 shadow flames and none dropped from the shadow fiends for a grand total of 30 balance fragments. The shadow demon is the clear winner in terms of balance fragment drops, but what exactly is a balance fragment? Now before we get into that, we must first understand a special crafting recipe in the shadow dungeon. This purple crafting stone here allows you to craft 5 unique items and equipment. And the first is the shadow buckler. So long as you have level 30 in smithing, you can craft the buckler with three buckler shots and one steel bar. You can get these buckler shots easily as a drop from nearby shadow fiends. Next, if you have level 15 smithing and 30 in crafting, we can craft the orb of light from combining a spectral ember, a phantom ember, and a shadow ember. You can obtain spectral embers killing spectral flames, phantom embers killing phantom flames, and shadow embers <laughs> killing spectral flames. Next, if you have level 16 smithing and 45 in crafting, we can craft a dormant shield from the shadow buckler and the orb of light. Then, if you have level 17 smithing and 55 in crafting, we can craft an orb of balance, which requires the aforementioned 30 balance fragments. And finally, we reach the elemental shield, the highest level shield in the game. We can craft this by combining a dormant shield with the orb of balance and as you might expect, a lot of smithing and a lot of crafting as a requirement. For a full guide on maxing out your smithing in just 3 hours, check out the video linked above and this is why we need the balance fragments. Now the reason this boss is completely optional is because we can simply buy these balance fragments from other players. They currently go for about 3 million apiece which is 90 million for 30 fragments to craft the orb of balance. Not only does the elemental shield provide the highest strength and accuracy stats, it also comes with a lot of HP and defense. However, it also also has a major downside. A freshly crafted elemental shield comes with 50,000 charges. These charges go down by one each time an enemy attempts to attack you regardless if they hit or missed. So essentially you can receive 50,000 attacks and this shield will be completely depleted of its life force and revert back to the dormant shield where you will need more balance fragments to craft an elemental shield all over again. Now, while the elemental shield has 10 more defense and 7 less HP than the ancient shield, since enemies missing you would still downtake the charges, this effectively makes the extra defense less impactful in PvE, which is essentially against standard mobs. Therefore, it is definitely not the best in slot shield for mages, but since this shield provides massive strength and accuracy boosts, it is technically the best in slot for warriors, but, but since warriors get hit a lot, it is conversely also the worst in slot for warriors. That is, the shield is kind of useless. But, 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 there is one big reason people craft the elemental shield, and that is for the extra H in PvP. It lasts a long time against other players involved in high-risk PvP and would be invaluable for its defense in keeping you alive over there. But, 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 PvP in this game is not very fleshed out at the moment, so this shield is still pretty pointless for the most part. Alright, oh my god, that was hard. Enough talking, more beating. For this fight, we need at least level 18 melee to equip the dormant shield. The elemental shield also works for this fight. This is compulsory, but more on this later. And as always, mages of absolutely any level are highly preferred to warriors. And as for our preparation, aside from the dormant shield or elemental shields, all we really need is a saving grace or two in case of oopsies and oopsies we shall do until we get used to this fight. Now let's move on to the attacks and mechanics of the shadow demon. The first skill he has is he is immune to all damage unless you are equipped with a dormant or elemental shield. Even simply unequipping a dormant shield mid fight stops the entire fight from progressing and resets the boss's HP. So make sure you have either of these shields equipped at all times. Next he randomly summons a shadow flame which will automatically aggro to you if you are near it when it spawn otherwise they just uh, hang around. These shadow flames will disappear when killed or when the shadow demon is defeated. Finally, just like the rock demon, he could start soaking damage for 2 to 3 seconds. All the damage soaked this way will be returned tenfold in an area about 3 tiles away from the boss. Even simply misclicking and attacking once during this phase could absolutely annihilate you. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up.
So those were his attacks and mechanics, but here are some very crucial tips you need to know. So firstly, whenever he starts soaking damage, he will still pursue the player. So apart from not attacking the Shadow Demon during this phase, you can also choose to run to the top corner, the bottom left corner, or the bottom right. Doing so will stop him from chasing you and effectively keeping you safe. Ice based tomes like the Blizzard Tome can also freeze him in his place, enabling you an extra opportunity to get away if you need to. But knowing the first tip leads you to the second tip. Since the boss doesn't chase you into three safe zones, you could actually shoot from afar and never get hit at all. Yes! This is abusing the game's stupid design logic, but it is better than getting absolutely randomly farted on. However, do know that doing this might be seen as a bug abusing offense, but since you're 12 years old, you definitely know right from wrong. Now, for the third tip, this is how I find it best to summon the Shadow Demon. This spot gives you a great coverage over Shadow Flames, which not only gives you more EXP than Shadow Fiends, but also gives you more chances for balanced fragment drops. So we just need to stay at a single spot over here and and when the boss spawns, we only need to run a short distance to reach him. Now let's take a look at the typical full run. The drop rate on this boss is about one balanced fragment per 10 minutes, which is six per hour. This is obviously dependent on how many players are concurrently killing Shadow Fiends and Flames around you, which would determine how fast the boss responds. But knowing that it dropped an average of six balanced fragments per hour for me, this is effectively 18 million gold worth of drops every single hour. Not too shabby. The only issue here is finding a buyer of these fragments since like I said, the elemental shield doesn't really do much for the average player. Most players would prefer a single big ticket purchase of an ancient shield rather than to spend half of that on a temporary one. So this is how you defeat the shadow demon. Hopefully this video helped you in any way. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more Curse of Eros content. Now with that said, this has been Dairy Free to Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.